how would you start a career in real estate at the age of 48 without any knowledge or experience of the industry? Well, it's not easy, but with the right people, training and dogged determination, you can do anything. I'd like to show you here today that it's never too late. It's never too late to learn new skills, to take a new direction and build a truly successful career. Well, my retail business, it went pear-shaped. My husband went off to work, the kids went to school, and I was left at home, alone, thinking, is this it? Is this it for the rest of my life? Oh, and I just had that awful moment of total panic. And I'm sure lots of you have probably experienced something like that. And I remember walking out to the back stairs of my very modest home. <laughs> and I put my head in my hands, and I sat there and I thought, if I go to my grave and I've wasted these talents, I had a pretty big ego even in those days, then I'd never forgive myself. So then the first of my big lucky breaks came along. And that was in the form of Nick Penkless. He owned Space Property, a boutique agency just at the end of my street. Well, my very first listing, it was, it was on a main road opposite a cemetery, and I was so excited. Oh, and I sold it. I sold it for, I don't know, about 300,000. And today, I'm on track to do 2.5 mil. So, <laughs> thank you. So, how do you go from your cemetery listing to this? I had to work out some things. And I probably worked out three main things, which is what I'd like to talk about today. I had to become a sponge. I had to listen. That's pretty hard for me. I had to learn, because it was like learning a whole new language. And I had to work out that people were more important than the property. And then I had to work out how to make this little Judy stand out from the crowd way before branding was even a buzzword. So I worked for Nick diligently for about a year and a half. And at the end of that, I felt I had a platform to bring on an assistant. And I was, in, in, I was definitely in a hurry. So, an assistant. Well, I brought on the fabulous Michael Kleinmeier. Michael Kleinmeier is and became my secret weapon. Okay, so how do you find an assistant or a secret weapon? Obviously, obviously you've got to be compatible with them, but they should contrast with you. And Michael not only contrasted with me, but he wasn't afraid to offer me constructive criticism. Oh boy. So, I decided to bring Michael on board and for him to come with me to the appraisals and the presentations. Oh, we were so green. Oh my God. Michael was not from a real estate background either. So, off we'd go. We'd do the appraisal and the presentation, and then I'd run back to the car and I'd turn to Michael and I'd go, score me, score me. And he'd go, four. <laughs> oh, you'd see my face. Oh, well, six. Okay, okay, so we'd go back to the office and we would talk about the things that we needed to work on. And the next day, Michael, I, Michael would be there with scripts and dialogues, with a tape, and we would just spend, I don't know, about 10, 15 minutes on a very, very regular basis. And those things, 
improved my knowledge, my confidence, and of course, my professionalism. But what it also did was those things became habits. And what I also found, that structure gave me freedom. I've never forgotten that. My retail career, well, it taught me never, never, never let a customer go. So when I started real estate, I, I just loved open homes. I saw open homes as my big opportunity to form those relationships. So even on the weekend, this weekend, I would have stood in front of probably more than 100 um, buyers. I have my assistant, Harriet, stand beside me. I love Home Pass, and I ask, we take lots of notes, because that's what I've learned to do, and I have always do it. And I ask certain questions. So what I'm really quickly trying to find is, um, what is the makeup of the family? And the names of the partners. Make sure you always you know, um, have their names there. I try and find out where they live, uh, where they are in the buying cycle. Just a few key questions so that when I go back to the office that afternoon and I call them, they want to take my call and I've got the basis of a good conversation and I know where I'm, where I'm wanting to go in that conversation with them. Now, this slide is just simply there to remind me that you never know who you're standing in front of, or what opportunities are there in front of you so that you can uncover them. This gentleman actually came through one of my open homes way back when I first started. And he was impressed with, you know, all the questions, and, and we formed a business relationship. And I went on to sell 26 homes with him in, in our area. We did some very significant, wonderful sales. I talked about my modest home. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay, so I decided to do a renovation about eight years ago. At the end of the renovation, I decided that I would, I would make myself do what I expect my sellers to do, an open home. So, I went through my business space and I pulled out, I identified about 150 um, people that I thought would be potential sellers, because I didn't know who would be interested to turn up. And I sent them this invitation. And it said, 24 months in the planning, nine long months in the making, and a lifetime to pay. Holy shit, that's so true. Anyway, I sent out the invitations, and guess what? 120 of the bastards turned up. <laughs> I was freaking out. But what we did that day was really so important. And what I did was form relationships with those people, but I showed them that I was real. They were very entertained by the fact that I was making myself do an open home. So I say to you, make sure you show your business base and your area that you are very real. People, and, and I'm not suggesting that you have to invite 120 people to your home. However, I do think you need to think about what am I doing to show people that I'm real? Social media is wonderful, and of course I'm on social media, but I do think that it can be a little bit one-dimensional. I love doing things like this. Competitions are great fun. I had this fabulous listing, and, and lots of people knew about it, but we actually ran a, um, a little campaign through the database, or the business base, and they had to guess the listing, and they did, and they loved it. Kevin McLeod, oh my God, I love Kevin McLeod. And he was coming to town, so I booked a couple of rows of seats, and then I ran a competition, and I asked my business base to write in and describe their home in their very best Kevin McLeod vernacular. People loved it. They responded. I wish I'd had more seats to give away. My favorite and last topic, your personal branding. So, 
when I came to Paddington, my God, there was two other Judies there. I was the third one. Oh, so, and they were very, they were both very well established. Anyway, I had this really funny little thing, I'm thinking, you know, how do I stand out from this crowd? And I had this really funny little thing, and I used to ring up, <laughs> still do it today, and I go, hello, I'm Judy, Judy O'Day. And people started mimicking me, and I thought, oh well, at least they're listening. So, I think the thing you've got to do is think about how do you stand out from the crowd. You know, you're not as good as your last sale, you're only as good as your next listing. So be hungry. I'm hungry. I'm also very brave. I've got a new twist on how brave I am. So listen to this. About four years ago, I was here at Arik, and I ambushed the fabulous Tom Panos when he didn't even know me, and I invited him to lunch at my home. And guess what? He came. Hey, Tom, get ready, ready for about 3,000 lunch invitations. You can do it. I also invited about seven or, or eight of my very favorite or best clients. And again, we formed a great relationship. We had a really fun, great time. Ah, I love using postcards to the business base just to see who's watching. You never know. We sold this home to a really well-known wallaby. Um, wallaby player, that is. As you can see, Michael and I are, well, we're not really very Devo Sportivo, but anyway, we went down and outside the house, we took this photograph, it was very funny, and lots of people laughed about it. This is a home where, you know, I put on my best high heels and I went down, again, to show the place that, you know, we're very Devo Sportivo, and we sold this great house with the tennis court at the back. But people loved it, and you know, the area talked about it, and it was great fun. But here's my very biggest thing that I've done for my brand. And again, I was here at Arik about five years ago, and I heard and saw them talking about videos. And I thought, I can do that. So I went back, and I found my video team. The team, I found them, they're actually students. They were film and television students. And I invested and helped them with buying some equipment because I think you should invest in your brand. So not all videos are vendor paid. Most of mine now are because I love my videos. I star in my videos. Um, <laughs> but what I've done with that is that when the buyers come into the house and greet me, they greet me, and I'm standing there and they go, oh, Judy, we feel like we know you. I love that. I think that's wonderful. My videos are very professional, and my sellers are so proud of them that they actually send them out for me to all their friends. So all of that marketing, that branding is happening with every single listing that I have. So I've been doing videos now for about four or five years, just getting better and better all the time. I know lots of you are doing videos because I watch, because I'm always watching for the new best thing. That's really what I'm saying, and we heard, we've heard some really great ideas here at ARIC um, over the last couple of days. There are some great new things Get hold of them and implement them into your business. It's really important. So Michael, Harriet, and I, that's my team, we're a very well-established professional team who really enjoy what we're doing. I look back very fondly on that cemetery listing. Tough as it was, it felt like gold to me. I slaved away to find someone to buy that house. Oh my God, the poor things. And I just, and I remember being criticized for taking too long with my calls. But I knew what I was doing. I was building, and I have built my business on taking time 
to build relationships between the buyers, the sellers, and myself. Because I know people are more important than buildings. And if you just look after the people, the sales will flow from there. So, I really believe that it's never too late. It's never too late to learn new skills, to take a new direction, and reach for the stars. But in saying that, you know what? Nothing ever goes totally according to plan. But because it's Monday afternoon, I'd like to leave you with a few laughs. And an enviable, enviable, enviable perspective with, an, with, envi with enviable views over this corner. This enviable view, enviable. <laughs> And my other favourite thing in the whole world is spaghetti bolognese because I never get spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> now you're driving home. We never get this close. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at the camera, Judy. Come with me and we'll take a closer look. <laughs> Bang! Oh my God, here we go. I bet you I split my pants or something. <laughs> I got out of the gym this morning. <laughs> so steer a course for family-friendly fun. I don't mind an audience, I'm quite happy. All righty. <laughs> Beautiful. Should Here I goes. curtsy? <laughs> Thank you so much. I can curtsy. <laughs>